Hello everybody, Phantom Fear here. Welcome back to another Click Team Fusion 2.5 tutorial. In today's episode we're going to be continuing our Jevil fight and we're going to be creating some attacks for Jevil as well as damage for the player after you get hit. This is going to be purely visible damage. It's not going to currently at this stage have any effect on our player. That being said, let's get straight into this. If you see last time, what we created was a simple box that could trap our player as well as player movement and a little happy dancing jevil over here. Isn't that adorable? So what we're going to want to do now is go back onto our active object that has all our sprites. Um, we're going to double click on that. We're going to go down to attack. Um, again, this is a very, very use useful sprite sheet. I'm so happy to find it online this would be a lot harder to rip out if we didn't. Uh, we're going to highlight uh, the entirety of this spade right here. Uh, we're going to press Control c and then OK. Uh, now we have that sprite copied, uh, we're going to right click, click Insert Object and go back to Active. We're going to put an Active somewhere up here uh, with a double click on that and all we're going to do is press uh, Control v and uh, again, if uh, it's larger than the box, that's fine. Press yes. There we go. There's our spade. Uh, once again, it's got the purple around the outside. Um, let's again go to our paint bucket, uh, select opacity, and just fill it all in. Now that we've got our sprite right here, um, you'll notice it's only pointing to the right. Uh, we're going to fix this by going down to the bottom left. And where you can see this little compass of directions, you'll see they're all empty. Rather than going through and uh, getting a new sprite for every single direction, we're going to go to this slider, which is underneath uh, the compass, uh, and we're just going to slide that from the very left all the way to the very right. And all that's done is added more directions and more boxes. Now, this might look like an even bigger task to fill in all of these uh, boxes with sprites, but it's very, very easy. We're just going to right click on the black box that has the arrow pointing at it, right click directly on that, and click create rotated directions. Now you see all the boxes have gone black, and if we click on any of them, it points in that said direction, which is great. That's exactly what we want. So we're done in here for now, so we're going to click Okay, you see we've got our little spade up here. This is going to be the first attack. The attack I'm planning on creating, maybe, maybe not in this episode, uh, we'll create the first part of it, um, is the spiral attack that happens. Um, this is simply where he uh, launches all these spades towards the center of screen in a spiral pattern. At this point, all I'm planning on creating for this episode is one that alone goes towards the center of the screen um but they're not going to be going in around in a pattern but that doesn't matter for now so now that we've got uh an attack we need it to be able to know when that attack actually affects us so we're going to click onto our soul and at the bottom left all the way at the bottom left under the animations ch um tab we're going to right click and click new. Uh, this will come up with a name that you can type in. I'm just going to call it hurt. Okay. Now um, we've got a hurt animation at the very bottom. So if you don't see it, you just got to scroll down, click on hurt. Um, we're going to delete this frame right here. And we're going to go all the way back up to the stopped. And at the bottom here, where it says uh, frames, I'm going to click on that, Control c to copy it, go down to Hurt, paste with Control v uh, delete the empty frame. Now I'm going to cl clone that twice. So right-click, clone, uh, and I'm going to get a slightly darker shade of red. And I'm going to fill in the heart with that shade. And we're going to select both of those now, both frames of animation. Press Control c and Control v about three times. Uh, one, two, three. 
what you'll see this has done is made a little flashing heart, but it flashes way too quickly. So we're going to go into direction options and change the speed from 50 to somewhere around maybe 25. Let's see how that looks. We're not going to loop this one because we don't want it to play forever. Um, that seems good. All right. Uh, that's totally fine. Uh, click OK. We're going to go back up to our event editor at the top. Um, and in here, we're going to click right click on new condition. We're going to right click on our soul once again, go on collisions, and this time another object. This object we're going to collide with is going to be the spade. Okay, so now what's the saying? When we collide with this, what's going to happen? What we want to happen is go down to the soul, uh, right click, animation, change, and then change animation sequence. Once you've clicked on that, you uh, menu will pop up, click on hurt. So now our hurt animation is going to play where we collide with this spade. But as well as that, I wanted to show that the spade has actually been affected as well. So we're going to go under the spade um, in this box right here, right click and click destroy. So when it hits us, in theory, it should destroy and show that we've been affected. So in order to test this, we're going to go back to our frame, drag this inside the box where we can actually react with it, and press F8 to run the application. So now we're in here with our spade, let's see what happens when we collide with it. There we go, the spade disappears and our soul flashes, and we press F2 to try that again. And it clearly shows that we've been affected by being hit by it. And little old Joe there looks very happy with himself. So this is great. This is all we've had to do for now. That's that's worked just fine. So we're going to put the spade back up to the top. And under the spade's properties, we're going to come down here. And we're going to click on the values tab. After you're here, you'll see a quite threatening menu. Um, we're going to go under alter alterable values and we're going to click new. That's just going to create a new alterable value, uh, which is what we want. We're going to double click on the name here, and we're going to change this to wait. This is how long the spade's going to wait before it goes to attack our player. Um, the value here is currently 0. I'm going to change this value to 50. Okay, that's all we've got to do there. We can click off that, go back up to the event editor, and we're going to go on to new condition. And this timer over here, we're going to right click on that and click every. Now we're going to remove the zero out, I mean, remove the one and change it to a zero for seconds. And down here in milliseconds, I'm going to change the zero to a one. So every one millisecond, we're going to have something happen. And that's something that's going to happen is we're going to go under the spade, we're going to right click. And we're going to go down to alterable values and click subtract from. Then you'll see it's already chosen weight up here. And we click one. And then we're going to press OK. And every one millisecond, it's going to subtract one from our 50. And now what we want to do is go down to new condition, uh, right click on our spade, go down to alterable values, compare to one of the alterable values. That's instantly going to go to wait, and we're going to have it when it's equal to zero. So once our time has run out, um, after 50 milliseconds, we are going to want the spade to do something. So we're going to go back to our frame editor, and we're going to click on our spade and go down to movement category. Um, under movement hashtag zero here, we're going to click on that and press the plus slash minus next to it. After we've clicked on that, you'll see this box with a spark at the top. Uh, let's create new movement. We're going to click on that and we'll have a movement one now. Make sure movement one is selected on the movement and we're going to change the type of movement to bouncing ball. That's all we have to do there, so let's go back to our event editor. Um, now, under the command we made earlier, uh, when the weight's equaled zero, we're going to go under our spade, we're going to right-click and go movement, multiple movements, 
select movement, and then we're going to go movement 1. And this is going to allow our spade to move after the weight has reached 0. Let's go back here, right click again um, in the same box, and we're going to go under direction, and look, uh, look in the direction of. Uh, after you've clicked that, you'll come up with this thing. Uh, where you can drag this little box around and put it where you want. We're not going to click on the heart because if you see the attacks, it doesn't actually go directly for the heart. It just goes towards the middle of the screen. So let's select somewhere relatively around the middle of the box. Uh, it doesn't matter if, if you're that accurate because all of them will go to the same place anyway and it's very easy to change later. So after we've put it somewhere around the middle of the box, we're going to click OK. Um, and now, after the weight has reached zero, this should, in theory, launch the spade to the middle of the box. Maybe a bit faster at the moment, we might have to change it. So let's press F8 to test it out. Let's wait a second, and look at that. It goes directly towards the middle of the box. I did notice something there, and that's that the sprite kind of jumped. Uh, that might be something in the way that, um, uh, that we've put the action point. Um, and the viewpoint of the spade, so let's quickly change that, it's not a problem, it's just a lot easier, uh, it looks a lot nicer if we do, so let's double click on our spade, and we're going to click on uh, hotspot, we're going to put that in the middle, and then we're going to go on action point, and put that in the middle, okay, so now they're both in the middle of that, and now that we've updated for this one, it's not going to be updated on every single one, so let's go back to the very right one, the one that we've edited, Right click on it and click rotating directions, uh, overwrite them, it doesn't matter. Uh, now that should look a little bit nicer, not as jumpy. There we go. Okay, so that launched towards the middle of the screen, but as you see, it went way too fast. That, no one could react to that. So we're going to go click on our spade at uh, the very bottom under speed. 60, let's change that to around 20, something a bit more manageable. Now if we run that... That's 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 more like it. Let's let's put that up a little bit, uh, maybe like twenty five. Um, again, change this to your liking. Whether you're recreating the general fight or you're making a, f a fight of your own, it's all very useful. Um, now that we've done that, it's extremely easy to do it again. We don't have to go through and change everything all over. All we have to do is Control C, Control V. And now every single one will act under that uh, ideology. So if we go like this. Whoa. Ah, oh, got hit by two of them. Again, you can see that we react when we get hit by them. And you can already see how close this is getting to the attack where they spin around. The only problem is they're not in sync to go around like that. And I plan on doing that in a future episode. But for now, I'm going to leave it there. We've made some very good progress in this episode. Um, I think it's, it's starting to look more and more like an actual Undertale fight. Um, more than just a little run around in a little box. Um, that's it for this episode. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you all next time.